haunted car. Once just a figment of imagination, then the stuff of science fiction. We started calling it the car of the future, and today, definitely reality, and also so in the Indian context, which is what makes this revolution so exciting. The internet of cars, yes, you might wonder what that's all about, but trust me, it's going to be coming to a car near you before you can even say internet of cars. And so uh, given the fact that this is a whole lot of technology that's now coming on to four wheels, um, I have to very reluctantly introduce the first person who's sitting right next to me, <laughs> that is Mr. Rajiv Makhni, because uh, of course I have to share this with you now. This is it. I mean, there's more tech in a car than a room full of computers. Uh, a car is now the biggest gadget in the world. So, Siddharth, we'll be doing this very, very often. Get used to so, it. get used to this <laughs> and this opening also that reluctantly, once again... Maybe it won't be reluctant after, <laughs> after a while. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> so, we've got so much to cover today, but if your question always was, what is the Internet of Cars? What's a connected car and how will it change? your life? Well, you've come to the right place because we've got a panel that will answer that and a whole lot more. The future of cars right now happening on this stage. So do you want to get started with the introductions? So we've got a stellar lineup, of course, and uh, to kick things off, first up from MG India, which is, uh, of course, one of the OEMs that's kind of driving this change, no pun intended, uh, is Rajiv Chaba, who uh, heads the brand here in India and uh, is an auto industry veteran. Uh, with us also is uh, Jürgen Haas, the CEO of Unlimit. And uh, on, on his right is uh, Zerk Friso, who is the Vice President, Automotive Europe and Asia for TomTom. Tom. Krish Inbarajan is the Global Head Connected Vehicles at Cisco. And uh, last but not least, Charles Kwai is the President for the Greater China Region at Nuance. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for being here. And uh, as Rajiv said, what we are trying to get at at the core of this discussion is how all of this changes people's lives. And uh, Rajiv, I have to ask you then, first up, uh, this is going to be confusing. Yeah, today. this is going to be Rajiv confusing a lot. But Rajiv, I have to you know, ask you and bang. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, MG, yeah. the fact that you know, you're taking this whole connected car plank as almost your sort of entry into India, uh, it's a bold move. It's exciting as well. Um, your strategy and the reasons behind that. So I'm happy to get you guys connected <laughs> in this forum of connected cars. Yeah. So uh, nah, I think you know, uh, we know uh, uh, very clearly, and I'll be very humble to say that our job is tough. Uh, it's, very, uh, it's not easy to establish a new car brand in our situation, in our market here. And, uh, and uh, there are very, some very established players. And many, many Western players, if I can say, have not been that successful in our country. And Siddharth, you know this better than me. And those brands are not in the consideration set of consumers. We are coming at a stage, uh, at that point of time in, um, uh, in our life here, where technology is merging uh, uh, a lot with everything what we do, in whatever way we do. So we have a unique advantage of, of starting this whole game in a very different uh, way. And we are going to challenge a lot of uh, established norms. We want to change, uh, we want to have a new paradigm. And also we want to make technology as the foundation of, of, of everything what we do in this company. So here, uh, we are starting with uh, internet car concept, which means basically that we have embedded SIM card uh, for the first time in the country. We need to obviously follow the regulations of this country. But having said that, we still have a lot of scope and a lot of play within that. So in simple terms, it means we are always connected to the uh, cloud. We, uh, in, the, in, in, in terms of security and safety to consumer, we enhance services. In terms of entertainment, utility, we enhance. We have a lot of voice activation control. I have lots of partners to talk about that. And uh, the thing is that, as Rajiv Makhani, you said, <laughs> that the car actually is going to be a platform in future, and you have lots of revenue services coming out of that. So I think it's a game changer, and we are happy that probably we are going to be in the forefront of that uh, change in, in our country. So before I move on, I have a quick question for you. Uh, so when you come in with a car like this, and you said it's a disruptor, it comes in as a platform changer, becomes a platform for maybe tech launches, who do you believe the right audience in India for a car like this is going to be? Are you going with the 
typical thing that most people say, it's the millennial who isn't brand loyal and therefore could jump brands, and that's why the focus is so much on tech? See, uh, I think that's a very interesting question. To be honest, I don't know the answer. <laughs> you know, it will evolve, and we are going to learn this whole thing together in this journey. But I think the questions which you are posing, frankly, are that is really brand that much important for millennials? Uh, what does it mean in terms of ownership to them? Uh, really, do, do they want to own it? Uh, or if they're owning it, then what kind of experience they want? Now, they want... So I don't want to spill all the beans right now, but we are going to have a 10.4 inch, the biggest ever screen in our country in the car, uh, which is bigger than the tablet. So, and that's a touch screen. So you can really play with that and uh, you, you can call a pulse hub or a call center for any services. Um, and if you go from point A to point B, uh, our map partners will tell you that it's a smart mapping system in future in which they can tell you what's the best way to go from point A to point B. The car can recognize your voice like Siri, you talk to Siri on Apple phone, here you will talk to, our, uh, you will talk to the car, and then car can learn your accent and voice. So there are a lot of things in which millennials are interested. So frankly, yes, we also sell cars, right? So, <laughs> so we, we will make sure that the car is good, competitive, fuel efficiency, power, blah, blah, blah. Usual parameters are competitive, but I think this will take the whole car experience to a new, uh, new, new level, in my opinion. So I don't know exactly all the answers right now, okay. but I think I'm happy that we are in the forefront and we are initiating this change. Yeah, you've yeah, got to, so, you've yeah, got to get so used think, to uh, Hey Hector, I think, instead of Hey, hey Hector. Now, right? <laughs> <laughs> so before we get down to having a more detailed conversation with everybody on the panel, may I ask all of you in a very short maybe sentence or two. So one of the things you'd said at some point in an interview was that 5G becomes really the big deal, I mean, with its low latency and what all it can do, the magic of 5G. But in India, we may be a little away from 5G. In fact, you've said that we, you, know, you don't expect it to be out very, very soon. So does that make things uh, slow down here, or are you very confident with the SIM card and everything else coming built into the car? Is that something that will take things forward much faster? Uh, first of all, the architecture is allowing exactly this migration to the next generation on, uh, for 5G. And for sure, 5G is, 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 is a world changer in principle. All the new services which are coming up. Uh, but uh, I personally believe 5G uh, is more a long term because it's not only you have much more bandwidth for streaming services, right. you have car to car communication, but these new services will come up like the same like we have seen on the smartphone. New services are coming up again and again and again. It's more a journey than uh, it's a big bang and 5G is there, where all the services are coming up. But they are in the future based on 5G. But you're right, it will take a little bit time yeah. before 5G is coming to India. But that's, that's not critical. Let's start with 4G and going ahead. Great, so that, that makes it so much better that we don't have to wait all the way to 5G. What about you? What is the role your company is playing to bring out the Hector? Yes, uh, TomTom is a pioneer in uh, location technologies. Uh, with MG, we work on uh, making the navigation system in the car daily relevant. And what does it mean is that you often know where to go from A to B. But our system being connected in the car really helps you along the route. Find the best place to get a coffee or to uh, avoid a traffic jam or there's roadworks. Eh? The infrastructure in India is changing so much mm -hmm. that it's really important to have a fresh map on board. And we are launching with uh, MG IQ Maps, which is uh, a, a way to keep your map up to date, really in the car. So the driver doesn't need to do anything to get that done. So it's the world premiere, actually, with uh, MG here in oh, India. So we're very proud really? to, oh, to do that. Premiere. That's very exciting. Okay. And the interesting thing here is that you know, a lot of that experience, which started with just simple plain vanilla navigation, then kind of moved to the smartphone because of real-time updates, especially traffic is now moving back into the car. It's moving back into the inbuilt space. And uh, that part then makes it better from a user experience point of view, I'm guessing. Absolutely. So like I said, daily relevance is very important. But people will only use the system if it's easy to use, if it, yeah. it's intuitive. And we proved over the years that we can make that happen. And your question about uh, autonomous driving, right? More that kind of technologies that will mean that the technology needs to be in the car. Yeah. Right? Because you don't want to rely on your smartphone 
to drive autonomously in some way or form, right? So that's why it's also important to have the partners next to me and to make that happen. Actually, together we can bring that great experience to the Indian driver. So no more propping up your smartphone and then for it to fall down on the floor and then you <laughs> end up at a completely different destination, right? That doesn't happen anymore with this, right? So awesome. That won't happen. Can't wait to try it. Yeah, can't wait to try it. <laughs> so Cisco, of course, a world leader in everything tech, but the connected car and Cisco has also been a great play now. Can you take us through what's, what kind of Cisco technology are we seeing inside this car? Uh, thanks, Rajiv. Um, so the Cisco technology we're really talking about was an acquisition that Cisco made around three years back in March of 2016. And through, it was a company called Jasper. It's a software company which effectively works with wireless operators around the world. And we currently support around 40 million cars. You know, you started off saying it's about connectivity. I actually met uh, the persons at MG in Detroit. You know, so this was around two years back. Uh, it was through connections. We ended up uh, meeting there. And then I was able to connect our partner in India, Unlimit, to them. And that's how the journey started. So we're able to kind of leverage the 40 million car experiences that we've got with literally billions of miles driven to figure out what not to do, more importantly than what to do. Okay. Because at the end of the day, a car is is in, it's essentially a, it's almost your second or your third place where you stay, right? Your home, your office, and your car. No. And it's important for you to feel comfortable and also safe within that. The Indian context is slightly different from most of the rest of the world because autonomous vehicles are already here, meaning you have chauff chauffeurs who are driving your car. <laughs> so you actually have the ability for you as a person who owns the car actually not to really drive. Mm -hmm. So autonomous, autonomous is actually here much ahead, but how do you then configure that experience within the context of India, was okay. how I've been able to learn about this. Connected Car, by the way, was actually brought me back to India to learn about the market, and through then it's been a journey about how to transfer what's happening in different markets around the world to soon what's gonna be the third largest new car sale market in the world in another two years. So very happy that Cisco we be able to provide secure connectivity, real-time visibility, and innovation that can get what Rajiv was talking about from a platform that MG is building. Okay. So I'm going to use that, by the way. Yeah. I'm going to use that line about autonomous. I was about I to it. say, yes, that is, that is such a... So, so Please listen, don't patent it. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first. India is the first country in the world to have almost all autonomous Truly. cars without the technology that you really think you about. I think that's, that's a very interesting one to say. So, you know, before we get down to what Nuance is doing for the Hector, uh, you and I were having a chat off this platform, and you came up with a very interesting example of what tech can do for a car brand, and you were telling me about an example in China. Could you just tell us that story before we get down to the Nuance of Hector? Okay. Well, so Rajiv, thank you for that question. Uh, just real quickly, Nuance is the leader in conversational artificial intelligence globally. So anything that deals with speaking, listening, reading and writing, and cognitive. And uh, back in 2015 and 16, we partnered with Psych Motors, which is one of the largest automakers in the world, parent company of MG. And we had a concept of how to actually invent an internet car. I like to call it internet mobility solutions. And with that, we launched the first internet car. It's Ni Hao Ban Ma, basically, on the Roe, which is the Chinese brand. And there was so much excitement, a lot of digital media excitement. What surprised us the most was prior to this car's launch, most car makers recognized that the brand or the quality or the safety are the top three reasons why a consumer would buy a car. For this particular car, Actually, the brand quality safety did not rank number one. Ni Hao Ban Ma ranked number one as for why the reason these consumers chose this car. And this car became the hottest number one selling SUV vehicle in all of China. Whoa. We hope to repeat the same thing here with our partners at MG. And what we have provided here is what we call the version 2.0 of what we've actually launched in China. So what we're seeing is in emerging markets like China, which is the world's largest automaker market in the world now, 
number one, twice as big as the US, India being the fastest, tends to leapfrog what the West has. So we don't have the legacies that what we had in the West, we're able to leapfrog, and the millennials and the younger generations were born with mobile phones on their hands, were born with apps on their hands. And now with basically the experience shifting, Rajiv, like what we talked about, mm -hmm. it's all about the experience, right. right? Charles, I have to ask you, one of the reasons in the, in the car space especially, voice commands haven't quite taken off like they have in some other parts of the world, of course, is the accent. I mean, that's one of the limiting factors. How different uh, will this be from not just understanding the accent, but also being more intuitive to it because it also has to work with things like maps. I mean, there are some places we can't pronounce sometimes. That's a great question. So um, unlike platform, what we have built here is what we call a hybrid architecture. It's both embedded and cloud. Mm. And we learned this from China, and we've actually started perfecting this in India. We know that the reliability of the network is, is unpredictable. So what we've moved a lot of the usage cases onto the car itself. So it doesn't okay. really require internet yeah. connectivity. It gives you lightning speed, very quick response, and actually it's a better user experience. On things that need live traffic data, whether it is media or traffic or others, we tend to connect with the cloud. The second thing is we realize that even though we're launching this in English, Indian English is very different. The way, the way that you pronounce P and B are mm. different. So yeah. we actually rebuilt this thing with our team in China because we recognize that in our team in China, there are different accents, there are different accents in India. So this is the first English, Indian English language pack in the world that we're launching no. here with MG. Hopefully, it actually responds very well with the Indian consumers. For, to make sure that this thing worked very well, we actually sent our user experience experts to travel with the MG team here in India. They're actually here. And we've also hired many of the Indian interns who are actually yeah. studying in China to rigorously test this thing. So we're yeah. quite excited about this. So of course, the most important thing that will happen is what will I be able to do with my voice in a car that I've never been able to do before? Oh, they, there's so much you can do. So first, I, I consider a great product is a product that you can think about it, you can use it, and you can't live without it. So now we're actually thinking about it. The usage cases is where we're going to be traveling the journey in about the next three years. And after three years, I think that question will become, I can't live without it. Nope. In the car, yeah. the most important thing is what I call you know, navigation of the content. So for example, if you want to pick a restaurant, you may say, find me a restaurant nearby. Or maybe your wife may say, I'm hungry. Or maybe your son says, I'd like that pizza location. Different ways of actually interacting with the car, more seamlessly, more human-like, more natural, instead of a, what I call a grid-based menu system, which is, prevents people from actually mm -hmm. using it. So in the past, it was more grid-based because of computing power. But now we have a, a bigger computing power platform, which is uh, our MG partners have put together. So we were able to have more what we call natural language processing, more human-like. The second thing is we're going to start building what we call a button-free. So you can actually control the car just from your voice, opening your sunroof, opening your window, turning this, turning the radio to a certain location, dialing up your, your air conditioning. So you, what I call a button-free. So imagine like when Steve Jobs started um, the iPhone. He, he insisted no keyboards. So imagine if you have no buttons in your car, what would your car interaction experience be? It's very, very rich. Further beyond that, we are actually in process of building what we call roadmaps with our partner here, where we will add features like voice biometrics, okay. which allows you to personalize the car. One of the most difficult things for me is when I go into my car, my, I'm about six feet one. My wife is like five feet one. So she always changes the seat. So imagine if you go in and say, hello, MG, boss number two is in the car, everything gets readjusted <laughs> for you. Very clearly. You, you meant yourself, right? Boss yeah, number boss one would two. always be her. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. Boss number one is Just, her, yeah. boss number two, of course. So these are the, these are the experiences that, that you could have. It's all about the user experience, the usage case, 
probably less about technology, in my opinion, although we are technology-based Very interesting. Company. I have to tell you, the real question he was trying to ask is, will the car sound like himself? You know, he'd love to hear the sound of his own voice. Yeah, can, can, so, can it? No, I think that would be actually frightening. That's I much. speak to the car, yeah, <laughs> and the car speaks back to me in my voice. No, it's that would be scary. frightening. But yeah, the cool part speak is... back to me in his voice. <laughs> it's all good. But the cool part is that he said that I can now order a pizza by talking to my car, and most probably in a few years, then my car will go on its own to get and it. get the pizza yeah. back for me, right? So you know, that's what we're looking forward but, to. But that's where we're going with this, and I, w I would like, uh, Krish, for you to give us not a necessarily a Cisco uh, view on this, but more like a, like a technology industry view on this. Um, today we're talking about uh, you know, how you are going to be speaking to your car, the car is going to talk to you. Uh, very soon it's going to be about cars talking to each other as well. So, how much of what you are putting in place today, in terms of the framework of this technology, needs to almost become uh, you know, universal, needs to be uh, brand agnostic after a point, so that it becomes an easier network of cars, as it were? So again, let me talk about the first thing that also MG is doing with Hector. Um, safety is a very fundamental part of a vehicle overall. Right? So that you're a car guy, with that right? topic, you're a tech yeah. guy. But regardless of that, safety and lives are very critical. So what Hector is actually doing is making sure they can harness this technology in case of an emergency call, yeah. would actually send notification to their own call center. You'd say, why do you need a call center? Mm. A human person is very important to take the call from a car that is in an accident or has some other issues. Distressed so technology way, yeah. is not just about everything snazzy and glitzy. It's about the fundamental thing to make sure the value of a life is going to be critical. And I would say MG is making a huge statement in this place. And actually, they're, 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 they're the ones who are going to have an embedded car with a call center, which can direct help to you. So as we get you know, taken away by technology, you've got to figure out what's important there. The reason I mention that is, the, the question you asked Adat about vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. Krish, if you don't mind, I'll just, if I can add on to this particular point about the safety, and you'll be happy to know that in that kind of particular situation, we have four levels of safety. Mm -hmm. So God forbid you meet an accident. So what happens is, uh, so we sense it in the call center, but we don't call it call center, we are calling it pulse hub, right? Oh, so yeah. so we have cool, a pulse right? hub, sounds, right? Sounds really so cool. that, that <laughs> hub uh, senses that you are in a problem. Yeah. So the, immediately the car, uh, the, the, there's an automatic call in your head unit. This is the head unit. So in your head unit, you get a call. Now suppose you are not in a position to take the call. It will give a call back at your registered mobile number. Okay, you are not able to pick it up. The third level of safety is that it will go to an emergency contact number, let's say in this case your wife. Mm -hmm. right? The fourth level, if nobody is picking it up, from there automatically they will send the they will send the uh, uh, medical services to you at the spot where to you the are. Car something. Yeah. Okay. So there are four level of safeties we are trying to provide in that, right? And likewise, when you talk about the pizza thing, uh, so that's the emergency call system. But you have another call system, uh, I call, in which suppose you want to have a pizza, you want to order a pizza, and then you don't know where to go to. So then you there's a there's a button. You you push it. So it again goes to Pulse Hub. Pulse Hub will call you back on your mobile phone not on the head unit. Why? Again, safety. Because head unit, you have to keep it free for any emergency services, not for pizza, right? So it will give you a call back on your mobile phone. And then if you, so this is what you want. And you say, okay, I want to go to pizza. Then you press the TomTom -tom map. And then you set the map from the Pulse Hub on your machine, and the car will take you to the nearest pizza place. So, it's like so those kind of things, mm -hmm. so kind of concierge. Yeah. But again, I don't want to overpromise on that part right now because this will uh, we will learn yeah. Uh, yeah. the point of interest and stuff like that. So, but that's the journey we are embarking. It's very on. exciting. No, right. of course yeah, it is. Right. is Sorry. So, Chris, no, back so, to you for the so, V2V. But, but yeah. the interesting thing. Thanks, Rajiv, for that. Yeah. So I was at OnStar General Motors, which has roughly around 15 million cars connected, and safety and security was a key aspect of it. What Rajiv kind of described took us around 10 years to develop to get to that extent, because there were no smartphones at that time. Right? Yeah. So what I think MG is able to do here is harness that entire capability and technology and process development and quickly bring that together at launch. That's amazing. That's uh, absolutely powerful. Mm. Uh, so that getting back to your question about vehicle to vehicle, and also I think your question about 5G. I think 5G has a lot of things to do with vehicle to vehicle because in that aspect you have low latency Correct. first. So vehicle to vehicle is about safety. 
right? It's to kind of tell somebody coming behind what could potentially be happening in around you. It's also about inter interacting with the, you know, the traffic signals and all of that, right? So vehicle to vehicle, I would say, is very critical. There are a lot of things that could possibly be there, as Jurgen suggested, but we're still a ways off in terms of saying, how could you actually yeah. do it? That's truly where network effect is very important. It's not about having MG cars alone be connected. It's about having all the other vehicle manufacturers connect. Mm -hmm. and, and in this context, it's not just four wheelers. Mm -hmm. It'll have to be two wheelers as well. Yeah. Right? So the network effect is very important to kind of have vehicle to vehicle communication. But the underlying technology is like safety and making sure, when I'm talking about safety, it's to making secure connectivity. You cannot hack into that. So where Cisco plays a role is to make sure that you know, you shouldn't be able to hack into that connectivity. You should also be able to measure the amount of data going back and forth. India has the lowest data rates in, in the world right now, right? However, even that is an investment that MG is making to bring forth because there's a cost that other car manufacturers don't have to take into right. consideration. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be able to make sure it works, it's economical, and is secure. There's lots of, lots of yeah, questions so, so coming we, in we, on social media. You want to take uh, one from there? I let's, have let's one. Let's take one from there, because this is a really good one, and I think, Jürgen, maybe you want to start it off, and Rajiv, you want to also add to sure. it. Uh, will the connected car become as ubiquitous as the smartphone, enabling payments, gaming, entertainment, and work? Can it become a mobile office and give rise to a work from anywhere, that's a hashtag, culture? Um, and of course, they have your hashtag after that. But uh, this is a question coming from Roger Lobo. It's a, it's a good one. Do you think that's going to happen sooner than later? Uh, there was one wonderful statement a few years before, then uh, the car in the future will be the fifth screen. And that's absolutely right. If you remember, each screen has changed the world. The TV has changed the world. The smartphone has changed the world. Each screen has changed the world. And with this one, yeah. we're also changing the world. Right. New things are coming up. And it's much more. Uh, I'll give you one example. You just mentioned the, the, uh, the part of entertainment. I'm married and I have four kids. <laughs> and with you need a it. good yeah. entertainment in a car, not that I'm doing the entertainer, in the back with the Wi-Fi in a car in the future, which are coming up, you have silence. You can drive for hours. <laughs> yeah, four kids in silence in the same sentence, that yeah, in yeah, itself yeah, is yeah, such yeah, an amazing, amazing thing to... <laughs> that's reality. The point yeah. is that's reality. And yeah. then, then, then we are coming, you're asking the question, uh, high bandwidth, uh, uh, no latency, if they're doing gaming in the future, all these things will happen in the future on the back. Four kids in the back <laughs> is not allowed, should be only three. Uh, but uh, in principle, that means yeah. all these things are coming up. Uh, and this is the reason also for business part, uh, you, you mentioned the part of autonomous driver in, in, in India. Uh, uh, people are working in the back. I'm also my driver in yeah. Mumbai, and I'm working most of the time in the back. And you need connectivity. Mm -hmm. And people are also thinking about the wonderful new things, but never forget the four wheels of a car. And connectivity is something like the four wheels of a car. You can create the best car in the world if the car in the future will not be connected. Yeah. You have a problem. <laughs> There's a reason why connectivity is so important also. Right. Yeah. There's a very ironical joke I'd heard that in the future, when all cars are autonomous, the game that will be played most when you're not driving is a car driving game. <laughs> so, so that's something that you know, we can really look forward to. You have nothing else to do. Go back to that time when you used to drive a car. That may well become the most... How sad that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes. <laughs> can I try to answer that question that the audience mm. asked? I think yeah. that was from yes. the audience. The answer is simply yes, because if, if we see leading markets like China, that's already happening, where you can actually park your car, you can pay for it, you can actually fuel your car, you can pay for it. And I think with India, with MG, that will be possible. Uh, there may be some additional um, infrastructure, connectivity, and also what we call the franchise of these parking locations, aggregating it together, but if there is a Lead indicator, what we partner with the MG of China, this is definitely uh, the trend. If I can a little bit stretch to make a statement, we are 5G enabled right now in this car, right? So, so now we start with next gen smart system, let's say software version one, like you say, iOS one. And then within a few months, we'll have version two, three, four, five, six. So this is how we'll uh, proceed. 
as you go forward and more of, more of these services keep getting integrated, payment especially, um, how important is it to then also have, of course you have to have the strong data network, but when you talk about the embedded SIM, what part of that service then becomes, let's say, customizable for the consumer? You know, you want to use more data in your car, hopefully we'll have Wi-Fi hotspots. So good question, very good question. See, again here, uh, please don't get sick of my statement that <laughs> it will evolve and we'll learn together, but actually that's the point. So we are starting with very good data free to the consumer to start with, right? Okay. And, and for the next few years, I don't see us charging. Uh, but depending on the consumer... That goes to your second model as well? Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. So, okay, so we want... Yeah. Uh, I don't want to overcome it right now, <laughs> but uh, we, we have the intention along with our partners that every MG car should have the system. Yeah. Right? We were just talking before this meeting also, so that's our intention, hopefully yeah. we do it. So, so coming back to that point, so we are going to give it the data free, the data is pretty good, and now depending on more URLs and more, AP, uh, more um, APNs we can add uh, to our system, thanks to regulation, then consumer will start consuming a lot of data. Now again, uh, to, to, to Zurgen's point, it's important thing is data is consumed hopefully by the back seater, not the driver. And by the way here, just to make sure again the safety is paramount, that you cannot play video songs when, when the driver is driving, right? So I mean, it, it will be okay. off. So, mm -hmm. so depending on the consumption of data, uh, right? Uh, also one thing more will happen, uh, especially in Indian context, we consumers are very smart consumers in India. So how do you, uh, can you exchange data between your smartphone and car? And I don't know the answer right now. Because you say I've taken a package on my smartphone and for the car I don't want to pay more data. Mm. So how that confluence happens, I don't know the answer. But still, we are going to make sure that we give a lot of services free initially to start with. But some consumers who want to buy more data for certain things, there should be a payment system that you can and they can buy more data. Add on. So that's all. You know, I'm very confused. I thought I was coming for a car launch and everything that has been spoken about here sounds more like a smartphone on wheels. Over the air, Ghana on it, data is free. It sounds like a smartphone on four wheels in every which way, but it sounds very, very exciting. So now we're going to go into that last part of a quick fire round. So gentlemen, you're restricted to maximum one sentence as an answer. And we're going to start off with you, Charles. <laughs> All this tech that is coming together, they say that the effect of this, the ripple effect of this, are things that we may not be able to understand today. For instance, they say autonomous driving will make sure that car ownership is no longer there. You may just want to be part of a club rather than own a car. With the kind of technology that has been described today on a car coming in from MG, What's the future that we are not predicting right now? What will dramatically change? Well, that's a very good question, Rajiv, and it's hard to answer, but I get asked that quite often. Um, we will share with you what we think the future may be, okay. but this realization of that future would require us as a collective to make that happen. Okay. Whether autonomous driving is autonomous, as my friend here says, by humans or by machines is is less relevant than what do you do with the car. So one of the ideas that we have today, we've just launched it actually but on our Nuance website, is as the car is driving down a station, for example, on the road, you know that you've clicked on Facebook, you like this Louis Vuitton bag. You know you want this Louis Vuitton bag for your wife. You know her birthday is coming up and you know Louis Vuitton is on sale. Automatically all that data aggregates together with a text-to-speech, the virtual assistant says, Rajiv, your wife's anniversary is coming up. Louis Vuitton's bag is on sale. Would you like to detour this car to go and get her the bag right now? That's where we see the world moving That's to. That's a bad example. That's yeah. a very dangerous example. <laughs> that, 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 and we know why she's boss number one very, very clearly now. Yeah. Krish, what do you see? A disruption that is not obvious to everybody right now, but in the near future. Sure. Uh, so when we think about vehicles, we primarily think about cars, bikes, scooters. Drones are in some ways part of that equation as well, right? Essentially, something can, can transport people or goods. So when you think about them today, they are primarily a product that's sold, and that's about it, right? You probably get to interact with the product when the, that vehicle goes back to a dealership. But now, this becomes a sensor. So you could really think about a sensor, with, be it autonomous or not, is traversing just every nook and corner of India. 
It could get information about the weather, about pollution, potholes in the road. It could talk about infrastructure. Is the roads, you know, the, is that bridge as it's going, is it rickety? Is there too much of noise? You talk about drones. What's the actual path that needs to make sense? You almost want to think about vehicles as having a third utility apart from transporting people and goods, as a sensor that goes anywhere and can collect the type of information with that connectivity. Connectivity right. is very critical here, right? In a way that can enable a whole bunch of things that haven't been conceived of as yet. Yeah. So if you think about it, a lot of data has not been collected yet where a vehicle goes today. Okay. But once you figure this technology out, the problem is it's not easy to do. Because you've been, you know, all of us are talking about what are the customer facing services? What are the services that MG would potentially be able to get? But think about what the society by itself can get by treating as a sensor. Yeah. So, so right? This is crowdsourcing in the ultimate way that the car will be automatically be able to do it. And there could be data coming in that could change lives. Yep not necessarily only of the person who's driving the car. Yeah, in Charles's case, yes. the sensor is LVMH, right? It's a handbag. <laughs> right. But for the government, it could be what's the pollution in the data, right. what can be done to fix it, right? right? Okay. The interesting thing that Rajiv mentioned that I want to mention is it's not a one-way sensor. Our target at TomTom, Tom, we want to keep the world moving, right? Making it a safer trip on the road, but also reducing congestion. And at the same time, today, I think 90% of the time, a car is parked, right? Imagine that, how you can change that around, right? 90%, that's a lot, right? Yeah, that's so I think the usability of that car to get it on the road, reduce congestion and, and keep the world moving. Yeah. That's our aim. Game changing. I know that you already have thought of the answer, but I'm gonna disappoint you and change your quick fire. <laughs> You're one of the rare people on this panel that's actually spent a lot of time in India besides you, of course. So your question is India relevant. Have you taken a ride in the most connected vehicle in the world, and that is an auto rickshaw. You know, I mean, you're out there, you're connected to all the people, the potholes really speak to Physically you connected. in every which way. You're more connected than ever before. <laughs> Have you taken a ride in an auto rickshaw? Uh, our one, one part we are uh, serving is uh, uh, connected vehicles, and connected vehicles is including the two, three, and four wheelers. Okay. And one part exactly is the rickshaw, and the rickshaw, you know, uh, uh, the, with the AS140 program, which is the government uh, is pushing, right. uh, you have the panic button in the car, in it will be connected, the public transport will be connected. Okay. And this is also, I want to add one more point on this, in the future, I personally believe we are living in a shared world, that means we are sharing things. We are using things very personalized uh, for one hour or for one day, as you mentioned, your wife is using the car, everybody in the family is using this wonderful car, and when you're stepping in, it's full personalized and as a shared service. And this, I believe, is changing the world in principle. Uh, whatever you, you're getting, you, you will use it for one hour. My kids never will buy a car. They will. My, I'm a German, as a German you will buy a car for sure at my <laughs> age, but my, my, my kids never will do it. But yes. somebody has a car and you will use it. And when you step in, it is, you have the feeling you are at home it's yours. in this moment. And this is the way which is coming up. And this will be sooner or later also coming, let's see, in five or ten years in rickshaws, when I'm stepping into an India <laughs> rickshaw, I'm feeling home. Let's see what will happen. <laughs> Rajiv, normally uh, the two anchors, of, this is rare, two anchors, get the last word, but I think we've been very, very sweet today. We're going to give him the last word. How does the MG Hector change the lives of Indians with everything that you're actually bringing in? This is your last word. I think, um, frankly, it'll be too much for me to say that uh, the car is going to change the lives of consumers. That's a big statement or a big stretch for me to say. So I would say that if in our small way we can herald this new era, of consumers expecting a lot more from the cars in terms of technology solutions, I think that's what uh, probably, uh, you know, we would be very happy with to start with. That we think that we need to 
democratize the technology. We need to bring technology at an affordable price. It's very important, one point which um, I'm sure some guys will talk about is that how do we bring this Indian narrative or the Indianized version of this technology in Indian context. As an example, we talk about connectivity, we are excited about 5G, let's not forget we have 2G and 3G also, right? So when we take this car to locations with 2G and 3G, how does this whole thing work, right? Accent, we talk about it, and we know the Indian challenge is much more, it's not one Indian accent. Right. We have thousands of Indian accents, right? In MG, we are trying to bring uh, all this technology in the Indianized way, in the most affordable rates possible. Okay. And on that last word. All right. So firstly, thank you to all, <laughs> all of you for sharing those thoughts, uh, giving us the details that I think a lot of people really did want to hear. Um, and Raji, thank you as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I'm ready for the car of the future. So this is looking it. It is very exciting times, and I can tell you what, uh, keep your kids entertained and silent in the back seat. Uh, find the most efficient fuel-saving route to your destination. Keep your spouse happy with the right gift choice. All of that is happening soon. Your lives are about to change. Thank you for watching.